Let's face it, life isn't easy. If you're stuck in a bad relationship, betrayed or afraid of tomorrow, financially insecure or desperate for a breakthrough, you've come to the right place. Dr. Carmen Hara is a renowned psychologist, intuitive, relationship expert, and best-selling author, and she's here to give you the miracle guidance you need. Her new call show, Miracle Guidance for Everyday Life, offers profound wisdom, practical advice, daily exercises, and empowering predictions, all for you. Dr. Hara's show aims to eliminate everyday problems, big and small, with topics like healing your relationships, reclaiming your power, achieving better health, dealing with loss, and so much more. Regain the joy, stability, and fulfillment you deserve to feel. Tune in to Miracle Guidance for Everyday Life with host Dr. Carmen Hara, live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and find the answers you've been looking for. Good evening, everybody. So excited to be with you tonight, like every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, on Home Time Radio, Carmen Hara. And uh, every show I'm trying to come up with something different, something more interesting, something to help you uh, improve something in your life. And as you know very well, uh, my expertise is towards uh, healing relationship and um, especially, you know, releasing and healing from toxic relationship. As uh, Valentine is coming, I thought to myself, let me... Let me help you and guide you to heal from from um, difficult relationship. That there are, there's a lot of toxicity out there when it comes to relationship, and we're not aware and we're not not aware what to do about that. Uh, and um, I'm gonna go step by step into the things that we need to do because relationship can be healthy and unhealthy. But tonight's show is about unhealthy relationship. The kind of relationship that causes sleepless night, anxiety, anguish, and those relationships that leave you questioning life itself. You know, chances are that you've been in that kind of a relationship at least at once. And if you made it alive, then I have to congratulate you. Uh, now, this is the time, you know, to, to talk about how to create a fabulous relationship with your significant other. But if you're stuck in an unhealthy relationship, what do you do? So I decided to host a show tonight about healing from bad relationship because the sad truth that many people today in, in, in our world live in unhealthy relationship, ones that damage them and leave them, you know, forever altered. So if you find yourself in such a position, I want you to know that you can change that whether you're still holding on to a person who's hurting you and want to mend your heart and mind after a painful ordeal, this episode can offer you a new direction in your love life. Because I'm here to offer you guidance on how to gently detach from something bad, from a bad person, and recover from a negative experience in love. Because I deal with people on a daily basis and I'm hearing stories like I went through this divorce. Women going through divorce years and years, five years, six years, seven years through a divorce. And you can imagine what that does to those people. People who, you know, swear to be together for the rest of their life and three years later, ten years later, you know, they end up by hating each other and then go to court and it's just becoming ugly. So... Before anything else, you should ask yourself, what is a normal relationship? And what is an abnormal relationship? What determines these things, you know? I'm always receiving different answers from deeper people. The woman who's been lied and cheated, you know, that she will always say, oh, all men are the same. They're all cheaters. They're all bad. They all lie. But what about the woman who's been married to her wonderful husband for 30 years? And she might say, Yes, unconditional love exists, support exists. Normality, normality is subject to a personal experience. But if your relationships are unhealthy, your inter interpretation of love can become distorted. Whether your definition, whatever your definition might be, we can all agree on one thing. A normal relationship is one in which both partners help, encourage, and rely on each other. 
A balanced relationship stimulates your highest feeling of love, of acceptance, of empathy. But one word that I've heard a lot lately is called toxic, toxic, toxicity. Toxic referring to something that is poisonous and harmful. So in terms of love, a toxic relationship is one that causes more harm than good and creates those constant feelings of anxiety, anger, even a lot of depression. But are toxic relationships becoming a new norm? If you're listening to my show, please, please, uh, please call in 202-570-7057 and please share with me what you think about this. Because we become immune to everything we experience nowadays. We can easily mistake our own toxic relationship for being normal. For this reason, I have to honestly evaluate the things that are happening between two people and face the relationship of, of your relation, uh, uh, reality of your relationship. Now, the first person who will tell you that your relationship is toxic has to be yourself. I don't have to come and analyze and tell you it's toxic. You have to become aware. And your own intuition will reveal whether you should be involved with that person or you should not be involved. So trust your gut. Trust your gut no matter how far it seems from the reality of the moment. Because sometimes when the things, something, or, or, or everything, or something seems off, that is off. You know, people know how to lie, but your intuition doesn't. So rely on, your, on that inner voice to assume that you are safe to grow with that person for many years to come. Now, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, normal relationships are, they are balanced, they are fair. Uh, both partners put in a necessary effort to make them fair. And one sh side shouldn't do more than the other. They should participate equally. Your relationship should not mark, be marked by arguing, yelling, bickering, uh, or any form of violence. No matter how much you both swear, you love each other and want to be together. Unless these kinds of emotions are controlled, the relationship isn't healthy for either person involved. The energy between you should be as uh, uh, beautiful as the surface of a lake. Everything becomes angry uh, once in a while, but, and that's tolerable. But as long as your relationship doesn't involve daily outbursts of anger, there is no reason why it can move forward. But you know what? Your partner is repeatedly lying to you about where he's going. What is he doing? What is he seeing? Uh, and then all of a sudden you feel that the relationship can get too far because pathological liars are characterized by serial dishonesty. To them, a lie is simply easier to tell than the truth. Everyone will let you, everybody will get caught sometime in a lie here and there, but your partner shouldn't be deceiving you regularly. Now, integrity, honesty, these are words that <clears throat> they are kind of erased from the dictionary. But those words should be alive and should exist. And both of you and your partner should be trusting each other. A healthy relationship won't have you feeling, uncomfort won't have you feeling uncomfortable about any part of yourself or would, won't have you um, feel anxious and with constant feeling of insecurity. So your partner should point out your stronger traits and encourage you to become even better. <clears throat> That's the way it should be. So any form of addiction in a relationship is abnormal to me. It is extremely difficult to live with an alcoholic, with a drug user, with a person who suffers from mental, emotional disorder. And trust me, a lot of people are suffering from this nowadays. And in the long run, this type of behavior issue will take their toll on your partner, hurting not only the person who has the condition, but the person who cares for, the, for him. So both partners might have a, a very pure mind, body, and soul and recognize the significance of physical, emotional, and mental health. 
I think that what, what needs to be done in this society, in this world, in our evolution, is recognize the significance of mental health. Because you must match each other at every other level, but you also have to match at the mental level. Because your partner is supposed to stir up your mental senses with his knowledge, with his wisdom. This means that he should continue to engage with you, intrigue you, stimulate you. This is not only about a physical attraction, the chemistry, but it's also about emotional intimacy and the mental connection. Relationships have to be alive on a mental note as much as they are alive on a physical sense. So if, you, if your love interest doesn't provoke your mind, you probably are not that compatible. So lastly, it's not normal if you no longer feel love for the person you are with, which happens. You might stay with him for the sake of uh, financial stability or we know splitting because of the children, but love is absent. And, uh, and, and what that is missing, it, it, it's terrible. Because you should be able to count the reason why you fell in love with your partner and your feelings for him should remain consistent over time. Uh, usually your partner will give you off red flags uh, that will be very hard to ignore. So consider your commitment to a person who, who's committed because if he's complicated from the beginning, it only will become more complicated in time. There are your partner might have probably, let's say, children from another marriage, and there's nothing wrong about that. But if he brings those kids into your life and allow those kids to make your life miserable, then you know what's going to happen. Uh, your partner might have trust issues from his bad experiences. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that in a relationship, you have to compromise and compromise when it comes to all this kind of complication. But if a person refuses to compromise, the relationship can survive. And equal to compromise is emotional stability. A person who displayed mood swings. Have you ever been seeing people around you with mood swings, mood swings that disrupt your inner harmony? People have mood swings. So they are the sweetest tomorrow. They're angry and, 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 and miserable and unstable. So... This is what's very significant to pinpoint. If you're exposed to bitterness, to resentment, to anger all the time, you know, you sort of du du duplicate those emotions and you become a person you don't want to be. So these are things that we should be aware of when it comes to toxic relationship. You should be always aware, you know, that... Um, your, per, your partner is disloyal, that your par partner is stingy and greedy. So pay attention to all these problems, you know, that have to do with not only trust, but also the other, uh, uh, you know, self-destructive pattern of behavior that you might notice in your partner. Um, if you want to call the show, the call in, I know I have a lot of callers already. Um, I have uh, Jonathan, I have... Um, uh, I have, uh, I think, um, Lelani, I have Julia, uh, I have Kim, so you guys hold on the line. I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, and make sure you ask me things about your relation. I'm very curious to see what's your take on this topic. The number to call in is 202-570-7057. But before I, I go to your calls, I would love to tell you about one of my interesting experiences that has absolutely nothing to do with this uh, show, but it's something I would love to tell you in two words. Um, I uh, um, discover a very interesting um, uh, site right now. So I want you to, and you have time, and if you're intrigued by this, go to Apple Store or Google Play and create an account on something that is called My Angels. My Angels is... Um, uh, something that, that is going to intrigue you is just a, such a positive place anyone wants to be on. Because when we go on Facebook, we see so much um, garbage sometimes. So, so many people putting all kinds of uh, messages out there. But we want to be, you know, 
staying away. We're tired of ugly truth. We're telling lies. We try. Uh, we want to stay away from the misery of life. We want to create something positive. We want to engage in supporting each other, in loving each other. So I think that um, when I found this side, my angels, uh, I was very impressed uh, because you go there, you create an account and you can um, put your thoughts and you will see a lot of people can share your thoughts or can answer you if you're in need in something. Uh, it's almost like every single day you start a new chapter in, in the book of your life. And if you do this, you know, and you express yourself, you will be amazed to see that other people interact in a positive way. If you put your wish, you receive energy from a lot of people who, who share with you the same opinion. Something positive. This is a very, um, very um, rewarding experience. So once you have an account, you can also search for me or search for friends. A search for other people and in a very short period of time you will start receiving a lot of light a lot of support uh, you will see an angel coming to you all the time on the side and so good thoughts you know will come to you we need that good energy it gives you a great feeling of being supported from different corners of the world from people you never met who come with a good energy towards you so try this I highly recommend uh, to go to uh, Apple Store or Google Play and create an account on My Angels. And uh, people will be able to write to you beautiful things. And again, it's, there's nothing negative in the site. Everything is about spirituality. It's about positivity. And uh, it refers to wanting to be good. It, it refers to dreaming about uh, create better things in your life, create the best version of yourself. So yeah, my angel, this is called, and I highly recommend this to all of you to create an account and even look for me and send me your opinion and send me your thought and your wishes. I'm going to go and take your, take a short break and then take your calls after the break. And I'm going to go to, um, I think I'm going to take Jonathan and then I'm going to take Julia because she's from overseas. And then I'll go to Lelani and Kim. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ometimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. <music> My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. And I'm back on Home Time Radio, so excited to be with you because it's so important to heal from a toxic relationship. And that's my topic today. Love is that emotion that has the power to penetrate all the other emotion, healing us on our deepest levels of being. But what happens when love itself becomes corrupt and negative emotion creep in, such as fear, hatred, or anger? So the result is a distorted version of love known as toxic love. And none of us wants to believe that there is a toxic relationship. But in fact, 
Many people are in unhealthy relationship than in healthy ones, and many people are actually in toxic relationship. And um, here the mechanism of our brain is to blame because our brains are split into sections. It's like a school with many classrooms. One classroom teaches science, one math, one writing, and so on. There's an even harmony spread throughout so that no one subject overlaps another. But when all students of all schools only attend math, um, then no other subjects are abandoned. So this principle applies to classroom within our brain. If you're only focusing on a person who you're in love, uh, day and night, then you are ordering all the neurons in your brain to go to that particular section of thought. And over time, neurons form bonds and establish relationship that multiply in number. So if you're obsessed uh, about what your husband is doing every day, chances are you can't concentrate on anything else. And if you're stuck on an ex-partner, chances are, you know, you don't let him go. So I'm telling you, ideally, is you want the neurons in the brain uh, spread out evenly throughout different areas of your life. Like those students, you know, in the classroom, those, that's the way the neurons work within the brain. So the word actually obsessed comes from the Latin word obsidere, which means to sit inside or to occupy. That person that occupies your brain. So make sure you understand your obsession with something or someone or a specific person. So, so they, those people become the main concern of your mind. Uh, so I want you to, to, to rethink, you know, because me as a psychologist and a, as a relationship specialist, I see all sorts of cases every day. But this is, you know, the, the, the case of obsession with another person is something that I encounter very, very frequently. Um, it's like the old phrase, you always want what you cannot have. Uh, but before I go more in depth in this, I want to take a call. I said I'm going to talk to Jonathan from New York. Hi, Jonathan. Hello. Hi, my dear. I actually like math, so I would like the school that only teaches math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> but uh, so. six years ago, I got married, and six years ago, I got separated. <laughs> And uh, it turns out my wife so, was just interested in getting the green card, and um, which she didn't get, uh -huh. but that was what she was focused on. I remember telling a friend of mine five years ago around Valentine's Day that I didn't have any hope that I would meet anyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's five years later, and I haven't met anyone else. And uh, actually, the, the my zest for life is, is actually gone. You know, I know you're supposed to count your blessings and you know, right. show gratitude and all of that. But I actually right. don't really care about what I've got. <laughs> I care about what I don't have. You know, I'm, I'm tomorrow morning, I'm on a show. And the producer wanted me to explain, you know, what are the steps to understand uh, what happens to you, you know, when you're in a situation like yours. It's interesting. So um, in my and in, in one of the steps, I, I talk, first of all, OK, you can uh, guess who your partner is by understanding your own archetype, which stems from the, your partner's behavior and your own archetype and your partner's archetype. And, and there you go, whether that person is really for you or is just for the green card. And another thing is reflect on your on, on what that relationship representing to you, the biggest obstacle. And why did that end? But you got your answer. You got your answer. So your answer is, okay, that person was not genuine, had just an interest. And, uh, you know, here I am six years later, and I still feel I'm damaged. I still feel I can break through. I don't seem to be able to move forward. Um, now, do you think you're able to detach from that past? Or is still, is like, like I said, the neurons in the brain still form that, that particular, that obsession with a situation that happened six years ago and you were not able to let it go? Well, I've forgotten most of the details of what happened, fortunately, but I think what it's, what's really the case is I would like someone who is as good as 
the person I thought she was. And as time goes on, I see, well, that seems completely impossible, that I won't meet anyone like that. Okay. So how long did that last, by the way? Well, I met her three years before we got married, but since she was overseas, to be perfectly honest, we only spent about two months in each other's company before she came over to the United States. Okay. And then so, four months later, mm -hmm, we, we mm -hmm. were separated. So, so at the beginning, your impression was great. You never had a, any red flags, anything, um, any indicator that this she might do this to you or... Or she has a different motive? Actually, I, uh, a lot of her behavior was strange. Um, and even though I'm a numbers person, um, I, I can't say exactly what percentage, maybe 40% uh, was strange. Right. But I always came up with excuses for her behavior. For example, she didn't really speak much. She knew English perfectly well, but she didn't really speak much. And uh, I, I didn't know about her friends. And I thought it was huh. maybe because that was just her her personality, maybe sort of like on the autism spectrum or something like that. But mm -hmm. then um, I realized after afterwards that no, it's because she, she didn't want me to know details of her life. So that once I figured out what she was about, I wouldn't have anywhere to go. And so I made up lots of ex um, excuses for her strange behavior. So yes, there were red flags, but I made up excuses for all of them. Well, you never thought to introspect a little bit deeper. It's very hard to do that. Her emotion, her behavior, her reaction to your emotion, you know, what she invoke in you. You never um, pay attention to all th those details. You are just convinced that, you know, from the outside, the surface, the presence, probably she was uh, uh, very charismatic. There was, she probably was attractive. You felt a connection, a chemistry. Was that a, 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 a great uh, um, motivator for your decision to, mo to meet, to marry her? Uh, yeah, I admit she was uh, attractive. And uh, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest, we didn't have that much chemistry. But I thought, no? well, why would she be with me if she wasn't interested? And uh, I, of course, assumed that she might be trying to scam me. And she mm -hmm. did things that made me believe that she was not. Like she did things that I thought, well, someone who's trying to scam me would never do that. Uh, for example, I met the people she very said were clever, her parents. Very clever person. Yeah, and now I, I now realize it was clever on her part that <laughs> right, she did the things clever. that would make someone like me believe that she was genuine, yeah. Okay. And the, obviously the communication was a problem. She didn't open up. She she was like a, more like an introverted personality. That was more her archetype. There was definitely something that made her, uh, that, that she knew how to make you give in, you know what I mean, and fall for her. And when that something like this happens, you know, this leaves a mark, this, this creates, the, you damage, you know, somewhere it damaged you. And you need that healing, you need the healing force, you need to bring somebody you love who's going to help you heal from this experience. That's the only way that you can break through something like this. Otherwise, you're going to turn in circles and feel like you're stuck. And it does feel like you're stuck because six years is a long time for a man like you not to be able to bring uh, someone else uh, into your life. And almost like there's a side of you that doesn't even want anybody else because doesn't, doesn't want another disappointment. Do you agree? Well, I actually literally didn't meet anyone. I mean, the last two years, we had the pandemic, of course. Exactly, but, um, yeah. A year after the separation, I was out of it for a year. And then when I started to recover, I actually don't know what happened to 2018 or 2019. <laughs> I really, look, thinking back, I'm wondering Have what, you ever what heard happened. anything from this woman ever? And did she get her green card, by the way? Uh, she did not get it through me um, because I did not. She had thought that I had submitted the application when I had not. Uh, so she couldn't and fool you, but she probably tried to fool someone else. She may have. Um, mm -hmm. the, according to the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service, she did leave the country. Um, so if she came back, it would have had to have been through somebody else. But, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, I, I, I tried joining a Match, and I remember writing at least 2,000 messages to different women and... <laughs> 
<laughs> getting only about five responses, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, so I just didn't meet people. I did go to a few events that social events from my, mm-hmm. the college I went, university I went to had alumni events, and I uh, I tried going to those and I had interesting conversations, but they almost never went anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I want you to do, Jonathan? I want you to take um, to do do something that's called journaling. Take a notebook, you know, and for seven days. Write your emotion morning, afternoon, and the evening. And when I say emotion, when you wake up in the morning, you have a certain feeling. But go deeper than just feeling happy or sad. And just introspect what is within you, you know. Uh, Like, uh, okay, I'm anxious. I am um, uh, uh, angry. I'm So whatever you feel, go in and go deeper and analyze the source of that emotion. Because emotions, you know, are, uh, without it, us even realizing, they, they mark, they dominate our action. Uh, and uh, if, even the inability to break through this, this situation that you're in has a lot to do with some feelings that are there, you know, that are uh, like, a, like a residue of a disease that has never been fully healed. And after seven days, you will be amazed to notice that you do have a dominant emotion. And that dominant emotion is, is there and is defining what is blocking you here. Believe it or not, it's, let's forget about the pandemic and the two years of a pandemic because we're coming out of this. And I personally think that somebody extraordinary is going to come into your life and help you heal from this experience. And, and finally, you know what I mean, you will... You, can, you will be able to even call me back if you want and tell the world, hey, I found the right person for me. In, in long terms, you'll see how opposite this new person is versus that bad experience and that person who had no ability to communicate with you properly because she had a plan. She was just in your life because she had something to get from you, not because she really cared about you, wanted to be with you. So let me know if you want to call me back one day to the show and let me know what is that dominant emotion after seven uh, days of working on yourself. Can you do that? Yes, I'll do it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for calling me, Jonathan. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I'll come to your wedding if you invite me. (laughs) Okay, I will. (laughs) All right, my love. (laughs) Thank you, my dear. And I'm going now. I'm going to go to Julia. Hi, Julia. Hello, Carmen. How are you doing? Hi, beautiful girl. How are you, my love? Thank you. I'm fine. Um, I love your topic, you know, as always. Okay. You pick uh, great topics. But um, today I'm upset with something else. So um, it's the relationship with my dentist or the orthodontist is that it? I couldn't find. Um I wanted to ask you, what do you think, um, if I should leave the situation um, how it's now, I will be happy with it in 20 years, in 30 years, because... Um, um, Which moving, situation, Julia, you are referring? I'm missing something yeah, here. Yeah, so I, you know, perhaps you remember, I wanted to uh, buy an orthodox, uh, orthodontic treatment to align my Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but nobody knows what to do. Some people tell me I need to extract some tooth. They don't know how many... Mm-hmm. They proposed me different treatment. I didn't met yet the perfect one. So I don't think you should. I don't think you should do anything now. I mm-hmm. think you should take a break and allow this to come to you in the proper timing because everything has a timing. Yeah, and my opinion right. is this is not the time. You're facing so many obstacles, so much opposition about this. Because mm-hmm. of that, let, let it go for now. Don't yeah. try to... Fix it if it's not broken. And it's not really broken. You just want to change something because you think it should be. But you see, the response of the people in the, in the field is very confusing, almost like they don't even know how to handle it, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. bottom line is the timing is not, the answer is not in, the, in any of those people. So the wisdom is put it on hold, don't do anything mm-hmm. yet, and let's wait. Yes. Let's wait a Sorry. little bit longer and you will see that if you uh, wait, 
you will be very happy and very pleased uh, how the things will turn, a- turn around for you probably in another year, probably in five years. We're not going 30 mm. years from now. No, we're going yeah. in a number of years from now when probably the technology will evolve. You know, humanity moves very fast. Yes, and figure I know it that. out. Different mm-hmm. treatment. You know, by the way, for everybody listening, this incredible discovery is that we actually can create organs that uh, uh, the body mm-hmm. is not going to react. Okay, let's say somebody has a, a congestive heart failure. In the lab, we can create a similar heart with the heart that doesn't function anymore. Or if somebody has cancer of the skin, we can actually replace the skin that we need to cut with the skin that is identical. So we can create in the lab through the stem, stem cell any organ we want. So, so medical field is progressing tra- towards something so revolutionary that in the future, if an organ in a human body will collapse, we will be able to replace it with an identical organ that the body is not going to reject. So that's so fantastic for the medical field. So, so exactly address this issue to you. Well, let's uh-huh. wait and see what discoveries are, are humanity gonna, is humanity going to come with that is not going to force you to do anything drastic right now Take no tooth. You don't have to. You know what I mean? Let's mm-hmm. wait. Let's wait. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Carmen, I know that uh, like uh, a month ago, you told me that this person will come faster, like in a matter of a week. So um, okay, I was if you thinking... are looking for somebody, you, that somebody might be there. But the message in a deeper, mm-hmm. at a deeper yeah. analysis, yeah. if I go yeah. deeper now, like you, you yeah. put it in a different perspective. I know if you mm-hmm. want to really do a surgery, you can do a surgery tomorrow. If, if somebody has a, mm-hmm. says, oh, I need to operate something because I need to, yeah. and you will find a surgeon. But probably yeah. the wisdom is to wait a little bit and see what are the messages, what else is out there. Mm-hmm. So what I yes. felt when you asked me, is there somebody coming there? Yeah. But the, the, all the delays and all the blockages are pointing towards the fact that you should not look for that person. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yes, I understand. Yes, you're right. I agree. <laughs> so let's be in alignment and agreement that waiting is the wisdom and we want to wait. Mm-hmm. Correct. Thank you so yeah. much. I'll do that. I'll put it on hold for now. Okay, my love. I love you, okay. my Julia. I love you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, Bye-bye. my dear. Bye-bye. And I'm going to go and take a break, and then I'll be back with you guys in a moment. I'm going to go to Leilani. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind, Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my 
And I'm back on Home Time Radio, so excited we'll be with you tonight. And again, I'm going to go to let you know one more time about this um, interesting um, app that I want you to look into that is actually free called My Angels. It's a new metaverse. And the only one that shows you the light, the only one when people can go and, and, and just uh, express good intention, uh, people who share interest in spirituality. Um, I really think you're going to love it. Uh, I love the idea. Um, I believe that a, a big group of people can sustain your wishes. Like if you put your wish, a beautiful wish out there, you will see how a lot of people are supporting everything, are praying for you, are sending you light, are sending you messages of encouragement. And I think we need that. I think we are born to interact with each other, but interact in a positive way. Uh, we're tired of being judged and blamed and, you know, um, uh, put in a corner. We want to be supported. We want to be empowered. And this is what my angels does. So if you go and get it on, uh, um, on, on the um, Apple Store or Google Play, you can find it and open an account in two seconds. Um, you will love it because the, the, the chances of fulfilling your wishes that are on the side are even greater, uh, you know, when a lot of people are supporting, are supporting this. So um, are supporting your intention. Um, it, it, it's, it's just an amazing feeling. And I do believe that something like this can make you, can make your dreams come true. Um, so I think that with the help of my angels, you can have a chance to build your own spiritual group for the first time. You can become a spiritual leader in your community. You can help other people grow. We can help each other. I'm a strong believer, and that's why we, we, that's that's the reason we are in this world to help each other. And the site is called um, My Angels. So please uh, uh, check it out on Apple, Google, and install it and. And be part of it and just look for me because I'm there too. So uh, I got so excited when I saw this. Okay, so uh, my show tonight was, was all about how to release and heal from toxic relationship. And also don't forget about my book, um, Committed, Finding Love and Loyalty Through the Seven Archetypes. Because if you're in a bad relationship, you need to learn your own archetype your personality traits stem from your own archetype. And the way for you to prevent a divorce, a separation, a breakup is by learning first about who you are, what are your strengths, your weaknesses, your capacity to love, your capacity to commit, and, and what are your partners. So is your partner a match? Is your archetype a, a match for the other archetype? Now remember, there's a dominant archetype and a recessive archetype. But always try to learn much more about this and you will be amazed to notice how interesting and how instrumental it is in finding out uh, how to be in the right relationship. Um, I would love for you to um, let me know what you think about my new book, uh, Committed, Find the Love, Alloyalty Through the Seven Archetype. And uh, you can send me an email at Carmen Harare Well, with any of your questions. If you have something to ask about my book or any questions for yourself, feel free to email me. I'm going to go to Lelani. Hi, Lelani. Hi, Carmen. Lelani. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi, hello. How are you? Hi. I'm okay. I love your topic and I need to talk about kind of what's happening. My brother died January 26th and oh. I'm in Cheyenne. Yeah, I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming and we had the funeral Thursday. And there's what, just a what lot happened? Of, How old was he? So he turned 58 on the 25th, the day before he made his transition. And he had diabetes and a uh, kidney transplant, and he got an infection mm. in his blood, which was causing his heart not to work properly. And then he became septic. So, I mean, oh. he had a lifetime of health issues. So I do believe that right. it's divine. 
the issue oh. that I'm reaching out to you is about mother. She's almost 80, and he lived with her, and they were best friends, and they did everything together. They were supporting each other. and Right. Uh, my mother's very, very, very sad. Our of dad course. died when I was a little girl, so she's like, now I've had two losses. And also my sister and I are clashing. We're not really getting along because uh, I don't like the mm. way she speaks to me, and it's her way or the highway, and she wants mom to move out and get rid of the dogs. And now mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I'm staying in a hotel, and I think I need to leave <sighs> soon. And there's just a lot, Carmen, so I don't know what you have you to say. You said I'm talking but I about love- toxicity between a relationship because it doesn't have to be only toxicity between – Lovers, you know, relationships okay. can be toxic inside the family. So right. you see this this bickering, this negativity, this blaming, this judging, this inability to communicate, you know, uh, so prevalent. So, because uh, um, I feel like you've been very damaged by this family environment in your case. I've seen that a lot. I mean, speaking with you a number of times on the radio, I noticed this has happened to you quite a lot uh, yes. through the course of your life. And that has a lot to do with the fact that you brought into your life probably not the perfect partner, you brought into your life, uh, and you have actually a hard time bringing somebody into your life. And you had a hard yeah. time to express yourself, and you have a hard time to create situation that circumstances uh, out of each, uh, it, so you can benefit you understand so that's what this uh, this uh, damage was reflect co- done to you was reflected into your overall state of being and in your life with everything that your life uh, you know um, showed you and, and 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 made you learn so I, I I feel for you and I I do want you to see where the source of the problem I think you knew I think you knew but probably yeah. what's becoming more obvious is what's happening right now. Right. Um, I have compassion for these two people. I know my soul chose them. And I of need course. to leave. So I need to leave. So I'm going to be the bad guy that I leave, you know, and. I want to heal my relationship with my sister. We used to be really close until she mm-hmm. moved back here. But right. I don't really understand what's going on with her. I think she has a lot of fear, and I do think she blames me for a lot of the family problems. I think she, bl- you know, I don't believe in blame and accusation and all these personal attacks just mm-hmm. because, you know, you feel to release your own anger and, and, Pick on somebody, you know. Um, yeah. I feel like uh, you can also force her to come back into your life the way it should be if it doesn't come from her. Do you agree? Yes. Did she show you any signs that she will reconcile and be with you the way things used no. to be in the past? No. 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 None. Mm-hmm. None. She acts like mother. <laughs> And right, I stayed you. with her for one week, and I was walking on eggshells, and that's what we did as kids. I couldn't mm-hmm. cook in her kitchen. I couldn't uh, turn down the heat. I couldn't open the window. I couldn't um, put down the toilet seat. I, you know, and it was just horrible, and I just felt like I couldn't breathe. And she's, she's in a lot of anger because her dad died June 1st, and not my dad, and she found out the truth about who he really was. And I feel Mm -hmm. for her, you know, she's got a lot on her shoulders and she just broke up with her boyfriend and, but also I'm not the scapegoat. I'm not the whipping boy. And I want her to speak to me with respect and not just vomit all her anger all over me all the time. Well, you know what, this is something that you should address uh, Mm -hmm. in a conversation with her. I don't know how ready she is to listen. She doesn't I don't know listen. how ready she is to respond Mm-mm. correctly towards you. She might not be. She might not be. No. Yeah, uh, she's not. And the question comes down to how are we going to, you know, um, uh, move forward. There's another option to just not to intervene and just take a step back and focus on yourself. 
because mm -hmm. you have a lot of issues in your own life right now because nobody's helping you, unfortunately. Right. Your, your family people are not supportive of you, you know? No, so no. they're more judgmental and blaming the supportive. So that's yes. even worse. Yeah. So uh, my advice would be, you know what I mean? Usually therapists or psychologists don't usually offer advice, but my advice, you know, is still to probably allow time to bring her into your life on her own, on her own okay. um, intention. Right. And don't necessarily try to force anything right now. If okay. She's not, it's not coming from her. I she's understand. Not, you know? Yeah. Uh, but other question. than that, you're okay? La yeah, I mean, it's been intense. I've been gone 48 days. But last question. So I reconnected with this old boyfriend in Argentina, Fernando. Right. And he's invited me to come back to Buenos Aires in May. I'm not okay. sure, though, what you think okay. about him. Okay, well, it all depends what kind of, um, you know, what, are you, what expectation you have from that relationship. Uh, if that was a good relationship and if there is a way to bring him back into your life, uh, then why not? Think, think about that. Think mm -hmm. about what will that mean to you? Is there mm -hmm. something that you should consider, should not think very seriously about that? Before you, before you commit to this, think mm -hmm. very seriously. Do me a favor, Lelani, go to App Store and write down uh, and... and, and, and um, download this my angels because okay. you're gonna love this you're gonna love it okay. and it, it i thought of you when i was telling everybody about this uh, it's called my angels one word and you can okay. open an account and you will you will love what you're gonna see there there's so much light there's so much good energy coming from thousands of people and you will feel like uh, you can spread the words about your wishes and if you put your wish there you will be amazed how many hundreds and thousands of people will support your wish. It's just okay. beautiful, you know. There's something and that I'm you, you're going to gonna like. And I'm planning to leave for Florida in a few days. I'm going to drive out to Florida to check it out. You are? St. Peter. Yes, that's my plan. So when you're around, give me, give me, a, give me a, okay. a call. Okay, okay, my love. Thank you. Love you. I love you, Lelani. I'm going to go briefly to Kim. Hi, Kim, my love. How are you, my dear? Good. How are you, Carmen? How is everything, Kim, with you, my love? It, you know, it's just another day. I'm trucking in there, and I just wanted to touch base with you. Um, I took your advice, and I reached out to him, and um, I asked him, you know, how is he doing? And um, uh -huh. he said, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Hope you're doing well. And he didn't even ask me how I was doing. So he was very brief and very short, and... Uh, didn't really respond to the question in a proper way. Am I right? That is 100%. Yeah. And I'm um, seeing on Facebook that he's been really hanging out with this other girl. So, I'm, um, you know, trying so to do it. Definitely, you know, there's definitely an influence of that woman in his life right now. That's obvious. Um, and we don't know what that is. There might be something temporary and there might be most likely it's not something serious, but as long as he feels uh, he gets attention from that person and that seemed to be somebody he thinks for now he has an interest in, uh, then so be it, you know. And concentrate on your other issues right now and put this on a side. Yeah. So you don't, do you still see him even reaching out again anymore in March? So whatever needs to happen, in my opinion, that story with that person has to come to an end. So right. whatever story is there going on that caused probably the whole interaction between you two, uh, and I, I assume that that's why all of this happened the way it happened, because so he, he, just, left, uh, he left her, he left me for her. I don't really think left or, or whatever happened in his mind, the confusion that there's somebody he, he probably claimed being interested in him. Uh, so something did happen. It doesn't even matter. What matters is that that story has to come to an end Then you cannot intervene because if he wanted to engage, he would have, but he didn't. Absolutely. 
Right. So I'm not going to, but do you still see him reaching out? Like, like last time I saw you, you spoke with you, you thought it was, he was going to reach out like March 12th or something. It's very possible that until then everything is going to be clear in his mind and he's going to have some clarity. Because obviously so like, he doesn't I mean, have clarity I mean, right it, now. No, but I mean, he, I mean, Carmen, between you and me, you're a woman too. I mean, don't you, wouldn't you feel like your second choice at this point? You, uh, you don't, you're not even a second choice. You, you're just non-existent for this man right now. No, but if he did come back, I would be a second choice to him, right? Like you're you not going to be a second tried... choice because if he closed the door to that situation, that that situation doesn't exist as a, as a choice. So uh, think that way. Okay, Kim, I'm at the end of the show, and I love you. Thank you for calling me, and everybody. I really Love appreciate you being um, with me tonight, and I'll be back with you next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Home Time Radio. And please uh, be safe uh, and um, create a beautiful week and uh, the best version of yourself with uh, love and healing and uh, authenticity and creativity. I love you. I'm Carmen Hara on Home Time Radio. Mm-hmm.